Hello. Today, friends, we need to talk about perhaps one of the most perfect books I've ever read, I feel like. And it's so greatly underhyped, and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Boy, was I completely caught off guard for this book. So this is very impromptu today. I did not expect to film this video, but since I put my rating on my Instagram stories, a couple people reached out to me hoping that I would do a review for this book. And I want to shed some light on this book and make people excited about it because why oh why aren't people reading this book? There's not nearly enough talk about this book book. I've seen it on some smaller channels, which I am super thankful for. I was talking to Liz from the channel Galactic Reads. She has a fabulous review that's spoiler free for this book as well. So I will link that below if you guys want to go check it out. And she kind of felt similar to the way that I did and that this is just a book that felt like it's written specifically for whoever is reading it at the time being. And I really hadn't heard anyone review or talk about this book until Jess from Stars Above Jess, which also, if you're not already following her channel, I have such limited watching time and she's somebody that I watch as soon as she uploads every single time. So go check out her channel. Anyways, these two booktubers were talking about it and I was like, you know what? I'll pick it up. I had heard that it might be for people that like the Starless Sea and I do think in a lot of ways, yes, it can be for fans of the Starless Sea. I also had heard just not a lot of great things about Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. In contrast to Piranesi, is quite lengthy. Piranesi is under 300 pages. Not one word on one page is wasted, in my opinion. So now from watching a couple other reviews, I feel like I really wanna pick up her other book because I feel like it might be for someone like me who enjoyed this book so much. So I wanna give as limited of a synopsis as possible because this is truly a book that you shouldn't know too much going into it or it will spoil your experience of reading it. Like I said, it's very short, under 300 pages. I listened to the audiobook, which I thought was fantastic, but I did have the ebook too because this book is written in journal entries. So it's really cool to see how they're labeled, but it is read to you if you choose to go the audiobook route like I did. So what is Piranesi about? Because let me tell you, I didn't know one thing about it going into it. We are seeing this a bit out of order because this is in my five star predictions video that I filmed last week, but you guys won't see it until next week, I believe. So I didn't cheat, but Here's your spoiler. I gave this book a five out of five stars. It is my favorite book I read in the month of February. It was brilliantly done in my opinion. So Piranesi is about the man Piranesi that is in a world of his own, also known as a house with like capital H. And that's his entire world. This isn't an ordinary house. This house has an ocean with tides that come at different times. There are birds, lots and lots of birds throughout this house and like a sky with clouds. It's a nonsensical type of world, which is sort of, I guess, why it could be pitched for fans of the Starless Sea because they both have that in common, but they have very different tones and overall vibes to the book, I suppose you'd say. So for example, at one point he says, I have traveled as far as the 960th hall to the west, the 890th hall to the north, and the 768th hall to the south. So as you can see, there's lots of corridors and hallways and different places that you're trying to picture this house in your mind. And that is part of the excitement of reading. So I don't want to give more away than that. He lives this very solitary life because there's only one other person in this house and that is the other and he doesn't have like daily communication with this person so he spends a lot of time alone he is very dedicated to his research for this house and keeps multiple journals he makes daily journal entries for his research and knowledge to collect all of this I don't want to say data, but facts about the house, I suppose. Now he is meeting periodically with the other because the other is this scientist. He's a researcher. He believes that there is this great and secret knowledge hidden somewhere in the house and he wants to find it through whatever means necessary with Piranesi. This is the only world that Piranesi knows at this point. The only life he knows are the other, his birds, and his 
skeleton friends. And one day when there's evidence of another being, things begin to change. Piranesi starts to realize things aren't exactly the way that he has believed they are for his entire existence in this house and things start to unfold and unravel from there. I don't want to give more away than that. So you spend a good amount of time asking yourself a lot of questions throughout this book. Who is Piranesi? Why is he here? Where are other people? What is this house that we are in? Who is the other? How did they get here? And there's a lot more questions that will come along with it, but I don't want to hint at any spoilers. It really discusses themes of belief, blind belief, questioning identity, almost dealing with religion. Spirituality and belief systems definitely play a major role in the themes of this book. In my opinion, this is a very philosophical book. This is a book you go into really having to trust the author to lead you where you need to go without knowing any more than necessary each step of the way. I'm not gonna lie, when I started this book, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to DNF it, but I was like, okay, we're in this house. There's a lot of statues, very large statues. And was it interesting? Yes, but I was like, why are we caring yet? Why are we supposed to care? And don't fret, Susanna Clark tells you exactly why you should care as you quickly become attached to these characters, which seems very strange in the way that it's written. The prose is very beautiful and it's almost, I don't know how to say it other than written in like an, an older, old fashioned type of way. It, it feels like an older book, which I personally love that when I'm reading, but we're watching the difference between these two characters Dear sweet Piranesi, who sees this house as everything he's ever known and loved. He writes, the beauty of the house is immeasurable. It's kindness infinite. And then we see the other who sees this house as a place to drive power from. And the contrast between the two of them is beautiful. Piranesi is this character who has this sense of wonder and innocence while trying to gather more knowledge. But he has this just... I don't know how to describe it. His thought processes and his way of thinking are what really get me in this book. He's so creative and it's so unlike us as human beings here on earth because of where he is and how he has had to gain knowledge and learn throughout his time of being mostly alone. He really thinks outside the box compared to someone like you or I would, I feel like for the most part. So you will become so attached to Piranesi. I would bet my bottom dollar by the end of this book. And like I said, very philosophical. This is a book that you go into not knowing all the answers for quite some time. And even at the end, I still think things are left a little bit open-ended. While it has a resolution to the book, I think that it can be interpreted in a couple different ways by people. And I personally love that. So this is a book that upon finishing, I immediately wanted to pick back up just to be told this story one more time to see what new I could learn from it the second time through. So you better believe I will be rereading this book sometime this year. It was absolutely delightful. I don't want to take the time to list them all, but if you do want to know more before going into it, this book was inspired and influenced by several different things. Just a few of being the Greek mythology of the labyrinth and even the magician's nephew by C.S. Lewis. I want to say before I forget too, I think if you are a fan of The Secret History, you might also like this. I feel like The Starless Sea and The Secret History are two books that while they're not really similar in most ways, they have elements of the storytelling technique that this book does that readers of those books might enjoy this book as well. And this is one immediately upon finishing it, I was trying to do as much reading as possible about this book. So it's not a book that you just pick up and read or listen to and then put down. I mean, you can if you want, there's no right or wrong way to read for whatever suits your taste. But I would recommend this for readers that enjoy doing more research into books, especially like seeing how other people interpreted the themes and messages being discussed, open-ended questions, and the philosophical themes that this book encompasses. I think it was just done beautifully. So I'm gonna take a second to read a Goodreads review from Nomadic Reader, Baba Yaga. I will link their review because honestly, they did a better job summarizing their thoughts about this book than I could have, so. 
I would like to reference them. Give them credit because I have a hard time summarizing my thoughts and feelings about philosophical books that are very, very unique. And they say, there is simply no easy way to pitch it, no quick blurb to draw readers in. It starts off as a weird, albeit intriguing retelling of the myth of Daedalus's labyrinth, only to expand into dark academia, paranormal thriller territory as the mystery behind Piranesi's existence slowly unveils. Still, Clark steers clear of genre conventions, crafting a story whose unique plot and clever twists are unpredictable yet immensely satisfying to the reader. Piranesi requires the reader to blindly trust its author and follow an unreliable narrator down a path that will eventually lead to a compelling conclusion. The journey is, however, just as fascinating as the destination. Clark's style and narrative voice are reminiscent of 19th century English literature, adding to the otherworldly and timeless atmosphere that permeates the book. The prose is simple yet elegant, like that of a modern Jane Austen. Above all, though, what makes this novel worth reading is the way it handles its themes. At its core, this is a story about the search for knowledge and the meaning of knowledge itself, something whose immense power can only ever be fully grasped by those who do not seek to dominate it. So I just wanted to reference that review because I think they were able to put into words what was in my head and I couldn't form on my own. So I will share that and I will share their Goodreads with you in the link down below. But I feel like there's not too much more I can say in this spoiler-free review. I just wanted to be able to gush about it a bit more than I would have time to do in my wrap up. And I hope that this book sounds appealing to some of you and I hope some more people will pick it up. And if you've read this, please gush about it with me in the comments because this book is so freaking special. It's so wonderful. It's so well crafted. Like I said, it's nearly a perfect book in my opinion because Susanna Clark did not waste any time. She wasted no pages. We have this small, contained, purposefully told story that wasn't filled with fluff and filler that was so well crafted. I can't, I, I don't have the words. It's just a book experience that one is not able to put into words. It's a magical experience. It feels like it's an experience just for you when you're reading it. So let me know if you've read this book. Let me know if you're interested in picking it up now. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments and thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Mm hmm.